say nobody like you. Oh, yes, Lord. As a church, this morning we got every reason. We've seen a lot of things that you've done in our midst. We've seen your ability in our lives. We've seen your capacity as the true living God. Daddy, this morning, we've come to declare again. We've come to establish your supremacy. And we are saying to the world that there is no one like our God. Daddy, this morning, as your people, we pray you speak to us in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Daddy, I am a little boy. Mm. I got no words. I got nothing to share with your people. Mm. But you are the word yourself. Hallelujah. Daddy, I pray you speak through me in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Daddy, we pray this morning that you don't speak to the ears of your people alone, mm. but you speak to their heart Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of this message, let your people be moved forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it prosper the church in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we please have our seat? This morning I want to quickly appreciate our parents in the Lord. I want to say thank you to our father and our mother in this house for the privilege to give, give to an ordinary altar boy like me. Yes, I keep saying it, I'm an altar boy, and this I am proud to be. And I say that, dear mommy, the Lord will continue to increase you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because there is something that we know that we've seen, that everyone that is attached, that identifies with this ministry, they know there is something special in their life, and they've seen God in natural separately. And I pray concerning us, every time we call upon God, the Lord will answer us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. You know, I was with Pastor yesterday, and we've been talking about it is my turn. At least last week he told me to start announcing it is my turn. And he didn't tell me what the team. He told us that he's going to tell us on Sunday. And when I came this morning and our father said, the team for it is my turn in August is a new song. Hallelujah. And at that point in time, when I was giving the title of this message to, to the media, the media were thinking like, I think pastor already gave us something like this. I said, wow, this is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. This morning, I believe the message is for someone. And if you are that person, I want to hear your hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Our topic this morning says, making room for the new. Making room for the new. As a church, either we like it or not, we are still in July, and July is a month that God instructed us to be in the place of prayer. And in doing so, we must be spiritually conscious. We must be spiritually sensitive, and that alertness on our part must be there to know what God is saying to us this season. And if you've not been doing this before, I want to encourage you this morning that in this month of July, even as we go into August, I want you to increase your expectations. Because expectations, they say, beget manifestations. And I don't want you to just be casual with it. I want you to know that Lord is doing something. And I pray you will not be left behind in the name of Jesus. Amen. I know this is a season for us as a child. a season that is so prophetic for us. God has declared so many things. And we've shared so many testimonies. And we are going to share more in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to ask the church this morning. How many of you here is ready for new things? If you are ready for new things, let me see your hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray, as you raise your hand this morning, that you are ready for new things. A new you will emerge in the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter how big the resort that you've celebrated or the one you are currently celebrating is, the next resort we make you to be that person that will be a point of prayer that people want to use your testimony to pray for theirs in the name of Jesus. I want us to quickly open our Bible to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 26, chapter 26. And we are going to read from verse 3 to 13. The way we are going to pray, the message is going to be as brief as possible. God help us. Because I want us to take one or two prayers this morning together. 
Leviticus 26, and I read from verse 3. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I'm reading from New Living Translation. I will send you the seasonal rains, and the land will then yield its crops, and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your fruit season will overlap with the great harvest, and your great harvest will overlap with the season of planting. You will eat your field and live securely in your own land. I will give you peace in the land, and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will read the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. Amen. Verse 7. In fact, you will chase down your enemies Amen. and slaughter them with your swords. Amen. Five of you will chase a hundred Amen. and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. All your enemies will fall beneath your Amen. Verse 9. I will look favorably upon you, Amen. making you fertile Amen. and multiplying your people. And I will fulfill my covenant with you. Amen. You will have such a surplus of crops Amen. that you will need to clear out the old grain Amen. to make room for new harvest. Amen. Verse 11. I will live among you and I will not despise you. Amen. I will walk among you. I will be your God and you will be my people. Verse 13, the last verse. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so you will no longer be their slaves. I brought the yoke of slavery from your neck Amen. so you can walk with your head, head, eye. Amen. Father, we receive those words. Amen. I will pray you bring them into performance in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is the Lord telling us this morning? As a judge, I keep saying sequentially the Lord is moving forward in phases. He told us in June, let me start from June. In June, divine attention. Because he says divine intervention. That means he attended to us. And he told us what he needs to do in our lives. We need to stay in the place of prayer in July. And August, he told us that you'll be in the place of prayer. Now, through his servant, we've received the new word that in August, we are going to sing a new song. Hallelujah. But for us to sing this new song, I want to explain some things to us. So that we create room, we prepare ourselves for what is ahead of us. In verse 3, you follow my decrees and careful to obey my commands. That means there is a part of us to be played. Our God is not a liar. If you should say it, he will do it. He already declared he will do it. So on our part, we have to follow his decrees and his commandments. In verse 4, he says, I will send you seasonal rains. The land will then yield its crops, and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. What's the Lord telling us there? Seasonal rains mean, for those of us that understand agriculture very well, we know there is a period that it is expected of rain to rain continuously. There is a period that we need rain, but we don't want it to be continuous. And a period is there that we don't even need rain at all. The Lord is telling someone, the Lord is telling me this morning, that he's going to send us seasonal rain. Amen. That means the help that is required for you to move to the next phase. That means the help that is needed for you to get the kind of result that you are preparing for, the Lord will make available to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, then the land will eat its crops. And the trees of the field will produce their fruit. <laughs> We've been in a place of prayer. Our prayer represents our crops. That means we've been planting. Because the Lord told us that we got his attention. That we should plant. And he's telling us. And I'm declaring to someone this morning. I don't know maybe even your crops. Maybe you planted in tears. Maybe when others are just praying casually. That Pain is too much that you know you cannot open your mouth, but the Lord is aware that something is bothering you. That is your crop. And I stand on the altar of God this morning to tell you that the Lord is telling you to make room for new because as we go forward this year, those crops they are turning to fruit. And your harvest will be plenty in the name of Jesus. 
Do you know it is possible for people to pray to have even forgotten that they pray? Yes, sir. By the time the results co kept coming. There are things that people claim, ah, I don't even pray for it. It's a lie. You might have prayed for it, but you've forgotten it. And I pray for someone that even in places that you think is already late, that when people even want to pray for you in that area, you are telling them, forget that side. Let's pray for something else. I pray that Lord will surprise you in the name of Amen. Jesus. He says in verse 5, your treasure season will overlap with the grape harvest. Amen. And your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. Amen. You will eat your field and live securely in your own land. Amen. Let me tell you what that means. There are some of us, it's not that we are not working. There are some of us, it's not that maybe we, are, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have money in our pocket. There are some of us, it's not that we are not blessed. But there is this fear in us that when we are spending... We are always conscious because we don't know where or where the next one is coming from. The Lord is telling you this morning to make room because you are moving to your season of abundance. A season that you don't need to worry before you spend. A season that you will not finish one before you get another. That will be your story in the name of Jesus. We are working. And if there is something I have come to understand in this country, I realize the country that when people make so much money, even people are fearful to make money because the more they make, the more, the more they take. And even some people will tell you, yes, you see what I'm getting, but you don't know my bills. That if you see my bills, you will not envy what I'm getting. But I'm telling you this morning, because the Lord says, your season of affairs will overlap each other. Yes. That means what you've gotten now, it's not going to finish before you receive another. Oh, yeah. I pray for you everywhere in your financial life, in your material life, that you are trusting God to move you to a level of abundance. I open you up to the expansion of God this morning. I said, let that be your story in the name of Jesus. It says in verse 6, I will give you peace in the land, and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. <laughs> Yes, like our father told us this morning, we look radiantly when we are in church like this. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are some of us, mm -hmm. immediately we step out of the church, that fear comes back to us, reminding us what is wrong with us, telling us that you know you've not said to this, and we cannot rest because of that. I pray this morning, everything that is giving you sleepless night, everything that makes you to be restless, whatever in your life that is transforming to cause a kind of depression in your heart. I pray for divine intervention concerning you this morning. That will be your story in the name of Jesus. He says, I will read the land of white animals and keep your enemies out of your land. <laughs> that is absolute victory. That is to tell you that even victory that you don't lift hand to fight, the Lord will fight your battles in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will fight my battles in the name Amen. of Jesus. He says, in fact, you will chase down your enemies and you will slaughter them with your sword. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. And your, all your enemies, they will fall flat. They will fall because the word that is needed. You know, as Christians, as believers, our sword is the word of God. Our sword is the prayer that we, are, that we pray to God. And in every area of our life that we are fighting battles, battles that we cannot even share with people around us, battles that we cannot publicly tell people, I say this morning, I declare, I join my faith with my parents in the Lord in this house this morning, and I declare concerning you, Absolute victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 9 says, I will look favorably upon you, <laughs> making you fertile Amen. and multiplying your people. Amen. When we're talking fertility, people think it's, all, it's just about biology. There is more to fertility than biology. There are people who are intellectually buried. That even the capital that some of us are praying that we should have, they got it, they don't know what to do with it. Because there is this infertility on their part. 
there are people that spiritually they are being tossed around by the enemy because spiritually they are infertile. I pray for you this morning. Anything that represents barrenness in your life, anything that signifies infertility in your life, I pray that the Lord will take them away in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, He will multiply your people. He will multiply my people. That means you are not going to remain small. That means you are not going to be little. You know, some people, they look at us, they look at you, they say, you don't even have people. They ask you, who do you have? Some people look at you, they size you up, they say, if anything should happen to this one now, who do you think you will come? But the Lord is telling someone this morning that he will multiply your people. Amen. Let me explain you how God multiplies people. Sometimes you might think, yes, I don't have people. We might desire to have some people in our life. But there are things that God can do in your life that will make people to claim you. Oh, yes. Do you get that? Yes. Now, if anything happens to me now, at this stage that me I am, they will still call me a Nigerian. Mm. If anything happens to Anthony Joshua, mm. they call him British Nigerian. You know why? People are fighting for him. Mm. There is a boy called Bukayo Saka. He's playing for Arsenal. Now, Kenyans are saying Bukayo is from Kenya. Gambians are saying Bukayo is from and yes, two days ago, I wanted to comment on Facebook to tell them that, ah, are you guys blind? This guy is from Nigeria, he's from my tribe. But I was thinking like, if I should say that, I join them. That is better let me just allow them to flourish in their ignorance. Because Bukayo is a Yoruba name from Nigeria. But now, he got so many countries because many are claiming him. I pray concerning you, concerning your children. What we make nations to claim that this belongs to us. I pray that will be your experience in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Verse 10 says, you will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out old grain to make room for new. <laughs> Mommy said something last Sunday and I'm repeating that now. When she was telling us about the the Bible study that our sister, Sister Jemima, took two Saturdays ago. Her mommy say, said that she need to move some things away from her wardrobe. Okay. You've done it already, ma. Hallelujah. You know what? I want to pause there because it is easy for us to declare, for us to claim. There are things that you might need to clear out for the new one to come in. <laughs> Let me explain that better. Are you still holding on to a past relationship? that failed to work, and it didn't allow you to get into a new one. Have you, are you still holding on to a business that failed, and because of that, you think because I failed the last time I attempted it, I won't do new. Are you still thinking, because that one didn't work, the next one will never work. The Lord is telling you this morning. Create room for new, and the Lord will surprise you in the name of Jesus. He says, you know, the beauty of it is just that, you have to move it out. Not that they are useless. I believe the cloth mommy is giving. There are cloth that will pay now. Okay. That you say, you know, it's not just about the, 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 the price of, a, of, of something now. There are some things that we are used to. I have even come to understand something. In my wardrobe, when I, when I want to wear a shoe, there are shoes that I love very well. Mm, let me say this. I pray it will not create a problem, but I will say it. <laughs> my father gave me a shoe. And I, I love that shoe. I wore the shoe. I went to my office. And it's like nobody, that office is a new place anyway. So when people see me, they say, oh, you're looking nice. You do this. You know all these people, the way they do their things. And I wore this shoe that day. You know, because of the situation of the country, we are not many. But I was expecting somebody to just appreciate the shoe. But when I, nobody appreciated the shoe, I put my leg on the table. <laughs> and somebody walked. I said, wow, nice shoe you got. I said, wow, yes, you get it. I said, nice shoe you got. And I told myself, I've been wearing that shoe for, for some time now. That the last time, this morning I wanted to wear that shoe. I said, ah, even the one who gave you the shoe might even ask you. Is it the only shoe that you now have? I said, let me wear something else today. You know what? There are things that you will take out 
no matter how painful it is, they are going to be the catalyst for the next thing that will give you more happiness. And I pray that will be your experience in the name of Jesus. So this afternoon, this week, thou shalt take action. Things that you need to clear, thou shalt clear. And the Lord will surprise you in the name of Jesus. He now says, this is for our church now. Verse 12 says, I will walk among you. I will be your God and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. So you will no longer be their slaves. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck so that you can walk with your head, head, eye. I declare, declare this morning and I say to you and myself this morning, anything and everywhere that we've been walking like slaves, any situation of our life that didn't allow us to talk because we know people will attack us if we should say it, anything in our life that, that won't allow us to speak the way others speak, I declare concerning you, an end has come to it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The word of God says, you will walk with your head and I, places you've been dodging, places you've not been relevant, in places where people think you don't matter, in places where you think in the equation of things, you are irrelevant. I say the relevance of God come upon your life this morning, and you begin to relevant in the name of Jesus. I want us to please rise up this morning, and I want us to take these few prayers. The very first prayer I want us to take this morning I want us to say, Father, Father, I receive the grace to obey and truthfully follow your instructions in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I receive the grace to obey. The grace to truthfully follow you, O Lord. The grace to follow your commandment. The grace to obey, O Lord. The grace to do what you want us to do, Pastor. Daddy, I receive this money in the name of Jesus. The grace to flow the way you want me to flow. To be to become a blessing you desire me to be. I receive in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to say, Father, Father let it rain in my life. And let my land eat fruit, O Lord. Daddy, let it rain in my land. And let my land eat fruit in the name of Jesus. Daddy, you great cross, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, let it rain in my life. Let my land, let you use great clothes in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say, my father, call the trees of my, of my feet to produce great results. Call the trees of my feet to produce great fruits in the name of Jesus. Daddy, call the trees of my feet to produce great fruits in the name of Jesus. Daddy, every area of my life that I've never Every tree that I've planted, Daddy, oh Lord, cause them to produce great results. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to say, Father, Father, I receive the peace of God. Peace of God. In this land, cause everything that troubles my hand to respond to the power of God. Lord. Everything that troubles my hand, Daddy, let them cease to assist, oh Lord. I receive peace of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say, My Father, I receive absolute victory in all areas of my life, in every battle of my life, in everything, anything that represents battle, in every expectation of life. Daddy, I receive victory, O Lord. Absolute victory in the name of Jesus. In the place of prayer, I receive victory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say, my father, I declare the favor of God upon my life and the attention of heaven concerning me. Daddy, I receive favor of God, O Lord. I declare the favor of God upon my life, O Lord. The attention of heaven concerning me in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I receive favor of God. I receive attention of God concerning me, concerning my business. I receive the favor of God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say, by the power of the living God, 
I declare every form of barrenness to disappear from my life. By the power of the living God, I declare every power of barrenness to, declare, to disappear from my life in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I declare barrenness to disappear from my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say, Father, I declare in the name that created heaven and earth. I begin to function in the multiplication and expansion of God. I begin to function in the multiplication and expansion of God in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I refuse to be little. Daddy, I refuse to be small. Daddy, I refuse to be limited. I receive expansion of God. I'm expanded on all sides. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to say, Father, Father, this week, I put an end to every limitation and restriction. Daddy, I put an end to every limitation and restriction concerning me. Every limitation and restriction, you know. Daddy, I put an end to it in the name of Jesus. Everywhere I've been restricted, everywhere I've been limited, an end come to you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let me quickly explain this next prayer. <laughs> you know when the glory of God come upon you, you go to places people don't see you, but they see your God. People that plan to mess you up, they see your God, they cannot attempt it. In places where they think they can scheme you out of things, they see your God, they know they dare not. I want you to say, my father, my father, I receive anointing for your representation. Daddy, I receive anointing for your representation, hold on. Daddy, everywhere I go, let men see you before they see me. Daddy, let men see you before they see me, Lord. Daddy, make me a model of your divine capacity, Lord. Daddy, I receive anointing for your representation, oh Lord. Everywhere I go, let me see you before they see me. In the name of Jesus. I want all to begin to appreciate God this morning. If you know this is a message.